this month's topic or this week's topic, I'm sorry, is grief and loss. So I am here with my friend and grief coach, Jenny Diltz. How you doing, Jenny? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for joining us for this week. Uh, so if you could just kind of briefly talk about grief or what happens when, um, you know, you don't do grief, those kind of things, and then we can jump into your presentation. Sure. Yeah. And one of the greatest misnomers about grief is that it's emotions. Mm. And so if you if you're a person that doesn't do emotions, when all of society says grief is the emotion that you feel mm -hmm. when a close loved one passes or dies, then you're holy cow, you're never going to be able to do grief. You're, you're stuck, right? What do you do? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, so then uh, one of the things that um, they were reading some of the, the content before we're doing our, our video here was the differences, right, in how men and women grieve. Um, can you, you know, talk about that or, or even is that included in your presentation? So it's not included by gender per se. Sure. Because okay. even some females don't do emotions and mm -hmm. even some males do we do use emotions mm -hmm. so it's not necessarily a gender specific difference okay good That's um good but we it's talk about split. yeah it's not it's not split gender but it's split as far as how people process grief okay that's the um thank you for making that distinction as we've already touched on there are a lot of misnomers in grief society doesn't often get grief right. Mm -hmm. So in this presentation, we just have a few short slides. We're going to really talk about what grief really is, not what grief is supposed to be or should be or any of the other <laughs> boxes right, that people right. put grief into. And, and, and Jenny, I do appreciate that you, you know, actually saying that because that's one thing that we do overall, right? trying to put everything into a box to make it fit what we think it should be. So, And like I said, sometimes that's helpful. Sometimes that's absolutely not. Mm -hmm. So what is grief? Grief is a universal part of the human experience. Everybody is touched by grief at some point in their life. Mm -hmm. Grief is the natural, essential, and involuntary response to a loss of attachment. That means it doesn't have to be from death only. It doesn't have to be only your close loved one. There can be so many different sources of loss and experiences with loss. Absolutely. No one is exempt from meeting grief at some point in their life. So where does grief come from? The sources of grief are as many and as varied as individual people are. So I just want to pause here for a minute. This is actually a great slide because this points out what you're talking about. Grief is not just from losing a loved one, you know? And it's good to pause at this slide to let it all sink in. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of grief. Mm -hmm. Individually, collectively. Grief comes from so many different places. Absolutely. So what's the difference between grief and mourning? Um, grief is the experience. What happens? It can be from something that you have absolutely no control over. It can be something that is 100% in your control, like a decision that you make. Mm. So I've learned a lot from the organization Being Here Human. And they work with grief in particularly in marginalized communities. Okay. And this is something that Rochelle said. Um, Rochelle is one of the co-founders. She said, if we want to distinguish between grief and mourning, grief is involuntary and not optional, but mourning is a right. I wish it was a human right. Mm. 
it's a luxury. And the act of mourning requires four things. It requires time, resources, access, and capacity. Mm. So grief is the experience. Mourning is what we do with the experience. It's the mm. expression of grief, whether that's outward expression or inward expression. Mm -hmm. And for men, sometimes, no, often, that right is either not available or not recognized. Mm -hmm. And even as men, they don't give themselves permission mm. to do the work that they need to do, to mourn in the way that they need to mourn. That's an important distinction, the giving, giving yourself the permission to do that. Absolutely. There's a lot to grief. It's not just, oh, yeah, slap a bumper sticker label on it. That's grief. Mm -hmm. You can dig so deep and peel off layers and layers and layers and layers and still have more layers to peel off when you're working with grief. Very true. Very true. So don't feel, as we're going through these slides, don't feel like you have to understand everything all at once. You don't have to be perfect at it. You don't have to understand all of the layers right now. Take your time with it. Take your time to learn about it as the subject of grief and also how you experience grief. Absolutely, yes, it's very personal. So speaking of expressing our grief, what do we do with it? Okay. They divide mourning and processing grief into three different categories. Most people are familiar with emotional grief or processing grief emotionally or mourning emotionally. Mm -hmm. It's like spaghetti. There are tons of noodles. And when you try and pick out one, you get the rest of the plate of noodles. <laughs> and and I'd like to point out, it's, it's, it can be messy. <laughs> the, <laughs> yes. The emotional part of it can be messy. And that's, um, yeah, that can happen. <laughs> yeah. When you pour the sauce on, it doesn't get on one noodle. It gets on <laughs> all the noodles. And it Absolutely. can leak out over the plate. Like, um, as you see the word emotional, it's leaking out of the pitcher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's okay. Yep. Mm. Very interesting. I would, I would like to add that I think over the time, I think the way that I actually express grief or in the way I mourn has definitely changed. I think when I was younger, it was probably more physical, you know, being able to do something that would clear the space. And mm -hmm. then probably a, a mixture of the physical part and then more cognitive. But I think as I've gotten older and begin to understood, understand grief more and have better ways to process it, I've definitely been able to tap more into the emotional side of, of grief and mourning. Mm -hmm. And it may change. That's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Our grief is not the same, even within the same loss. Our grief is not the same when it first happens. And months, years, decades later. Very true. Very true. And there's no one right or wrong way. Mm -hmm. Our, like we were saying earlier, grief is instinctive. Our bodies, our souls, our hearts, our minds, our spirits, all of our being, we know how to grieve. We'll end with like a final thought. What would you like um, all of the participants in the class? What's kind of one thought you would like to leave them with? Like you were saying, trust yourself. Give yourself permission to do what you need to do. Absolutely. Jenny, appreciate you uh, being here uh, this week for this week's lesson.
And uh, guys, you know, the, if you need to get in touch with her to work with her one-to-one or ask about the workshops that I spoke on, you can always uh, go back in the video and get her contact information. And I will post the information next to the video as well. So thank you so much, Jenny. Thank you, Lee.